wish we could get out of this dust bowl before the wind hits. It's too late. Get over yonder. We'll have to find some shelter for the herd. Whereabouts? This country's flat as a pancake. Curly! Shorty! Keep them moving! over there. Scenery, Rusty. Magnificent. You can see the Rocky Mountains. That's them going by. <coughs> Is the wind shifting? Well, I'll take a look. Hey, shut that door, Tucson! It's shifting, all right. If this keeps up, it's likely to blow itself out quick. I'm mighty glad we don't live in this country. I wonder how it got this way. Looks like the World War is to blame. World War? Yeah, listen to this. March 9th, 1918. Overseas demand sends wheat prices to new high. Panhandle country turned from cattle range to wheat field. In this country alone, 11,000 acres of grassland are being plowed under this spring. Miller Higgins made a profit of over $80 an acre last season and will plant 3,000 acres this year. Luke Parker has just completed a fine home for his family and paid cash for an expensive automobile. Poor devils. Millions ruined at the end of the war. Wheat prices went down to nothing. Sure. But how about the millions of acres of cattle range that they ruined for cowmen like us? Well, at that, you gotta feel sorry for them. Say, have my ears wore out? Or has that wind actually died down? It's all over, boys. Let's hurry and get that herd to water before dark. We'd have stayed with the cattle. Looks like they only got the edge of it. Yeah. Hey. Looks like somebody rustled himself a steer. Yeah. Slaughtered it on the spot. Can you imagine rustling in a storm like that? Well, I reckon he won't be able to travel very fast with that much of a load on his horse. Horse nothing. Look. Why, can you picture that? 
A man on foot toting a whole steer. Let's take a look around. You fellas stay with the herd. All right. Well, there's nary a sign of it. Looks like we're out one steer. I'd sure like to see this steer toting Hercules. Well, don't bother your head about that. We got to ride into town and get some supplies. Okay. We'll have the boys push the herd on the water. I don't know about you, fellas, but I'm starved to death. Well, I could stand a little chow. Well, there's a place across the street. steak. Sorry, we're all out of steaks. I'll take three hamburgers. Me too. Well, I'll have the same. Only make mine double. Say, so, you know, it kind of riled me to think of the three of us eating hamburgers while that rustler is more than likely sinking his ivories into a good juicy steak. What's the matter? You fellas lose some cattle? Just one. As far as I'm concerned, he earned it. Yeah, can you picture anybody toting several hundred weight of beef on his back? Say, I'll bet you that was Will Parker. Yeah? Where's he live? If I was you fellas, I wouldn't go gunning for Will. He's not only the strongest fellow around here, he's the best marksman. Sounds like quite a boy. Yeah? Say, I'd like to meet him. Too bad we aren't staying over. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Something tells me we are staying over in Tucson. Do uh, you live here? Yes, but if you don't. Oh, but it's an idea. Good evening, Mr. Ballsinger. Hi. There's that Parker girl. Pretty nifty little number. I'll say she is. And so we have to get the herd through to the National Park. Hey, how about cutting in, cowboy? Certainly. Honey, I think Joe Bolsinger likes you. You know what I think of him. Say, he's one of the biggest men in these parts. Why not be smart? You know, he do your folks a lot of good. Come on over and say hello. No, thanks. Come on, don't be a sad. No! this. I'm sorry I got you into trouble. Good night. Well, wait, you aren't going to rush off and leave me, are you? I've got to. Nice work, stranger. You looking for a job? No, thanks.
better take you home. No, thanks. I can take care of myself. You weren't doing a very good job in the lunchroom. All right. Thank you. Good night. I'm going in with you. I'd rather you wouldn't. You're not very hospitable. Oh, it's you, Irene. I uh, brought your daughter home from the dance. Well, that was real nice of you, Mr. Uh... Brook, Stony Brook. Glad to know you, Mr. Brook. And I want you both to meet Mr. Smith and Mr. Jocelyn. How do you do? They're waiting to see your brother Will about a job. Oh, say, Stoney, remember that job we were talking about out on the trail? You gentlemen know each other. In fact, we're partners. Oh, I do hope you can find some work for my brother. Uh, please, won't you sit down? Thank you. What can I do to help with dinner, Mother? It's late. Well, Will didn't come in till after dark. He had a lot of meat to carry. Meat? Where'd he get it? He helped a rancher with some butchering and took his pay in beef. Oh. I see. We'll have dinner as soon as he comes back. He just went out to rustle some more firewood. We've had to do our cooking in here since our kitchen roof fell in. Well, that's too bad. Oh, as long as we've got part of a roof over our heads, we're thankful. These gentlemen are here to see Will about a job, Father. Well, that's fine. Won't you stay for dinner? Well, we trifled with some hamburgers, but that meat smells mighty interesting, Mr. Parker. It isn't often we have good beef to offer strangers these days. I reckon jobs are pretty scarce around here. Yes. In fact, the only jobs that is is cleaning off the highway after a dust storm. You see, I used to be foreman of the road gang. Used to be. Yes, since my accident, they, they've they laid me off on account of disability. Why don't you tell him the truth? He was fired because he wouldn't collect graft from the men that were working under him. No, uh, we can't prove that, Irene. And uh, besides, these gentlemen aren't interested. Oh, yes, we are. Well, there's an election coming up. And we were notified that we would have to contribute a week's pay to the campaign fund. Campaign fund. Every dollar of that money went into Balsinger's pocket. Well, anyway, I refuse to give it and refuse to collect it from the poor devils working under me because they're worse off than we are. Sir Joe Balsinger said he'd make an example of us, Parkers. And that's what you get around here when you stand up for your rights. Well, you're not supposed to starve. You could go on relief. No, no, we couldn't. They turned me down flat. That's controlled by the same gang. Besides, there's no relief for a man that owns property. Did uh, you ever try to borrow money on a thousand acres of dust and sand? No. Looks like you folks have a real problem here. That must be Will now. I reckon we'd better go on out and help him with the kindling. Mm. Be back in a minute, Stoney. Oh, uh, Irene was so busy hating Joe Balsinger, she forgot to tell you about the money. Money? Yes. They had a dancing contest. We won first prize, didn't we? Go on, show them. Oh, yes. Here it is. Twenty dollars. She's a darn good dancer. Oh, I, I wouldn't have gotten anything if you hadn't danced with me. Thank you. Well, where is he? He must have seen us coming. Reach, you're covered. Go on, reach. Now turn around. Well, this is a fine way to treat a couple of friendly strangers. Friendly? How do 
I know you're friendly. You'll have to take our word for it. Don't give me that. I'll take the wind's word that it's gonna rain. And I'll take the sun's word that it's gonna be clear. But I've learned never to take a man's word for anything. But you don't mind taking a man's steer without asking him, do you? When you're hungry, you ain't thinking. But you're not gonna lock me up. I'll kill anybody that tries to lock me up. You better soft pedal on that killing stuff, bub. If you make good on it, they'll hang you. Hang me? They'll have to catch me first. Will! Oh, Willie! Yes, Mother? Dinner's on. Bring your friends. Friends? Yeah. You'll find out. Come on. Been a long while since we was able to set folks down to table. Yes, it makes me feel like a new man again. Come, sit right down, gentlemen. All we've got is roast beef and cornbread. But that's a feast in this country. Make us feel truly thankful, O oh Lord, for that which we are about to receive. Amen. Well, uh, have you gentlemen had a talk with a boy? They sure did, didn't you, Tucson? Oh, about that job? Sure, we're going to give it to him. Figured to start him out as a top hand, 60 a month and found. How about it, Rusty? Well, we can't deny he's a mighty good man. We don't know how to thank you. Don't try. How's about some of that beef, fella? You know, a top hand can't keep the boss waiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I do, Mrs. Parker. Next. Good morning, Mr. Balsinger. Why, Mrs. Parker, I never expected to see you here. I've come to contribute to the campaign fund. Oh, that's fine. There will be a job for Mr. Parker, won't there? Sure, sure. Have him come around tomorrow. He can go on the labor gang. Labor gang? But he's a foreman. Uh, I'm sorry, that job's filled. But he's not strong enough for day labor. Well, have him come see me when he is. Oh, but he needs the job now. We can't go on like this. I'm sorry. It's a labor gang or nothing. He should have known when he had a good thing. All right, next. Just a minute. You forgot to give the lady back her money. I didn't ask for the contribution. She volunteered it. You're lying, Balsinger. You're selling jobs. Get out of here. Don't tell me what I'm doing. All right. Give the lady back her money and we'll get out. You'll get out now. Throw him out. <laughs>
You boys all right? Sure. You, uh, forgot this money, Mrs. Parker. Thanks. Tell Will we're leaving right away. I guess we know how the land lies now. The best thing for me to do is go into the Capitol and have a talk to Senator Roberts. Okay, and we'll take the herd over to the park. It sure looks like you've had a rumpus here. Yeah, fine time for you to come around. Well, I'm sorry, but I... Would I want you to arrest the three musketeers. Well, they just left town. Uh, they'll be back. I'm swearing out a warrant against them, and I want you to serve it the minute they show up. All right. New cow hand, Will Parker. He's shorty and curly. Howdy. Howdy. Hello, hi. You reckon you like it up here, son? I sure will. I'll like it any place where I can earn enough money to take care of my folks. Permit. Oh, you're from the 3M Ranch, huh? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All in order, gentlemen. Bring your cattle right in. Thank you, Warden. doing with this outfit? He's working for us, Warden. I'm sorry, but I can't admit him to the park. He's a violator of the game laws. You can't prove that, mister. No, but we have orders to keep you out of here. Well, look, I gotta hold this job. If I promise not to kill any more game, will you give me another chance? Well, I'm sorry, but it's out of my hands. You've been ruled out, and I can't change the ruling. Well, thanks anyway, fellas. Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. You forgot your wages. I didn't earn any. Well, you didn't have a chance. What chance do I ever get? Now, I know it's been a little tough, but things will get better. So long, Bob. I'll be seeing you. So long, Rusty. runs true to form, he won't go home without meat. spread out.
Hold it, Parker. We finally caught you with the goods. Parker has always maintained that the right of human beings to eat is higher than the right of game to live. He claims the state owes its first duty to its citizens, not to animals. Sounds like pretty good sense. I've called an emergency session of this committee to hear a startling story of corruption. I want you to hear it as I heard it, from an eyewitness whose character and integrity I can vouch for, Mr. Brook. Thank you. Lady and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you about voters. Voters dissatisfied, not with their government, but with a man in their community appointed by you. He dictates their very existence. Citizens regimented under threat of starvation, forced into paying him for jobs. This is serious. Serious? There's going to be a lot of people around here glad to testify. Nobody's going to testify. Hey, the old man must be in the shed. Well, I'm not threatening you, Parker. I'm just reminding you that you've got a family. And you better think of them before you go shooting off your mouth to any investigating committee. I am thinking about my youngsters. And I'm thinking about the sort of country they ought to have to grow up in. Even if it is only a dust bowl, they've got the right to be free in it. You go back to that tin horn dictator and tell him here's one man you couldn't buffalo. And that I'll tell the world about him and his gang of buzzards. <laughs> Old timer, I certainly admire your speech. Shake. You asked for it. I wouldn't do that. Thanks, boys. Are you hurt, Dan? No. But if I didn't have a story to tell before, I've sure got a good one now. And witnesses to prove it. Hmm. All right, on your way. You shouldn't have said that, Father. Bal Singer would know it anyway. But now he'll do anything to keep you from testifying. That's right. Now we'll have to see that you and the rest of the witnesses have protection. I expect we better see the sheriff right away. Boys, you mustn't go into town. The sheriff has a warrant out for your arrest. What for? For wrecking Balsinger's office. Well, it looks like he's trying to keep us away from that hearing, too. Yeah. Well, we'll notify the other witnesses, but we'll keep clear of town. Be careful, won't you? Hello, Sheriff. The musketeers are out at the Parker place. Get out there and serve that warrant. Right away. Guilty of assault and battery and disturbing the peace. Did Ball Singer have you arrested? He did, huh? Hearing must have started by now.
Just how long are we supposed to wait? I don't know. I can't understand this. Well, maybe you're convinced by now that you were misinformed. Looks like Volsinger won this hand. I can't figure Parker not showing up. Well, they might have seen to it that he didn't. Do you think they might? Well, boys, I'm turning you loose. How come? Volsinger dropped the charges. Mighty nice of him, now that the hearing's over. Keep your chin up, kid. You'll be out of here in no time. Yeah. You better get out the Parker place. see who did it? He went out to hitch up the horse to take us to the hearing, and we found him like this. Please, don't do anything more. We can't let Bosinger get away with this. Don't you see that there's no use fighting? She's right, Stoney. We appreciate what you tried to do for us, but it's hopeless. Yeah, it looks like all we've done is make things worse. Get Will a good lawyer. Tony, we sure want to compliment you. How's that? Well, you're getting better all the time. It only used to take you about a week or so to get us into trouble. This time, you've done it in nothing flat. All right, we gun things up. But I'd still like to get a crack at that guy. You and me both. Well, it's on our way. got quite a working over this afternoon, Will. Unlock that door. Unlock that door! Come on, hurry it up. Get inside. Ball singer had my old man beat up. Did he? Yeah. I'll kill him for this. Well, you'll hang for it. It'll be worth it. Parker's loose and he's on his way to kill him. Wait a minute, we'll take care of it.
Parker kid's out to get you, Joe, and you better be careful. You're probably as much to blame for these dead men as he is. I heard you joined the posse. We had to. I suppose you think we're hiding him. Irene, the posse has orders to shoot on sight. Without giving him a chance. If we can get to him first, we'll see that he gets a fair trial. If we can find him. I think I know where he is. He may be up there. Boy, he's sure got a bird's eye view of the country. You wait here. Find him in here. have just been transferred directly to Manhunt headquarters at Gunsight Ridge. Flash, Wild Man Parker has finally been cornered in a trap.
Sheriff Nolan has worked his men up within striking distance of the killer. So far, they've been protected by the rocks, but now a hundred yards of open country lie between them and the outlaw's fire. Will any of them dare risk it? <laughs> Parker has stopped firing. Maybe one of those bullets has found its mark. Apparently, the sheriff thinks so because he's ordering his men to move in. you to withdraw the posse for a few hours. If we can only get two, Will, we're certain we can persuade him to surrender. I can't risk it, boys. He'll probably shoot you down before you can get near him. Well, he had a chance to shoot Stoney the other night, and he didn't do it. He knows we're his friends, and that's why I'm sure he'll come with us. Well, it might be worth taking a chance. Marshal Drake speaking. Uh, hello, Sheriff. Well, stand by, but don't take any more chances. I'm sending out the cavalry. Boys, Parker's killed two more men. Operator, operator, get me Fort McGuire. Once the cavalry gets there, Will won't have a chance. Unless we get there first. <laughs> Remember, Sheriff, no shooting no matter what happens. Well, boys, you heard him. No shooting under any circumstances. Stand by. The Mesketeers are just starting. Looks to me like they're dead set on committing suicide. Up to now, no one has even dared venture out to bring back the bodies of their dead comrades. Well, it looks like he's outsmarted us again. And he's probably headed back into the hills. Uh, 
I don't blame you for giving up that manhunt. Those nervous deputies are more dangerous than that goofy wild man Parker. So you think he's crazy too? Why, sure he is. Crazy as a tick. I know all about him. I'm with the broadcasting company that's been sending out the news. If he only knew of all the lies we've been telling about him. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he's used to lies by now. What do you mean? Everything's a lie here in this dust bowl. What's the use in trying to be good and work hard when you can't get work to do? What's the use in trying to get ahead and save money when you can't earn it? Sort of radical, aren't you? Maybe. Are you going all the way to town? No, I want to stop by and see my folks first. You can drop me off at the Parker place. The Parker place? Yeah, that's where I live. I'm Will Parker. Maybe you'd better get out and walk. We'll both be safer. Sheriff's office. This is Doyle, radio operator. Sheriff, we just got word on the short wave that Parker's headed for his home. Mount up, men. say goodbye before they put me away. Good morning, Mr. Bowsinger. Any news? No. No, I'm not worried. Parker's 40 miles away from here and surrounded by an army. In fact, he's probably dead by now. Take a good look at that money. It's the last you'll ever see. Look, kid. You can have it all if you let me go. There's nearly 5,000 there. Getting kind of generous, aren't you? I've often wondered what it'd feel like to have this much money. Now I don't guess it'll do either one of us any good. Get on outside and you can tell them I'm here. Come on. 
There's hardly a man in this town you haven't hurt or robbed in some way or another. Any one of them would like to take a shot at you if they dared. Well, I'm gonna give them a chance. That's just to let them know we're coming.